the business motherfucker. The Daily Read, your source for news, politics, sports, and all things trending. Here's your host, Marcus Gentry. All right, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to The Daily Read. I am your host, Marcus Gentry. Now, I've been off uh, two weeks. I had a, a, a very beautiful wedding that I had to go to in Florida, Treasure Island, Florida. I saw two of my good friends uh, get married. It was hot as hell, but, you know, I had my linens, but we put our suits on and we went out there and we had, my, my partner had a successful marriage, people. It was, it was beautiful. Um, I got some exciting news. I'm about to be a father again. Uh, it's just confirmed, actually it was confirmed two or three weeks ago that uh, this would be my first son. And I, I, am, I am very happy. I mean, when I say happy, I'm, I'm, I'm ecstatic. I'm, I'm, I'm very happy because I've been praying for a son for the last 10 years. I have two beautiful daughters. My daughters are grown, and uh, both of my daughters have made me a grandfather. So I'm also a grandfather. I have uh, three grandbabies, but this will be my first son. Now, I know a lot of you who uh, have grown kids, I know some of you guys that got grown kids are looking at me like, man, what is you doing? You know, I done got rid of, you done got rid of your kids. And now you're trying to start a whole new set of kids. Well, the thing about that is, uh, daughters, even though we love them, we'll do whatever for our, our daughters. But daughters marry into another family. They take the last name of the man they marry, and they help that family produce and keep their generations going. Sons keep your generation going okay and i want y'all always to remember that and 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 if you see a lot of guys out here who have all females some of them have gotten themselves in a situation where uh they've grown too old and they don't want to try to have a son because it's really a roll of the dice unless you're rich now if you're rich you can go and to specialists who can actually separate the male sperm cells from the female sperm cells and, and actually help produce you a son if you're rich. But if you're poor and you don't have the 15, 20,000 to do that procedure, what happens is you basically roll in the dice. You know, if you're trying to have another child and trying to get a son. I rolled the dice. I could have had a, another girl. I rolled the dice because I wanted to have a son that bad. And uh, I'm happy to say that uh, I am going to be a father again. Well, I'm already a father, but you know, just like I said, this will be my this will be my third child. Oh. Uh, How can I, I today? Today's show is gonna be. Um, we're gonna talk about the crazies that have come back out. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna we gotta talk about these people because not only are they doing recounts on the election, but Donald Trump is going around telling people that he's gonna be reinstated as president in August. Now, understand this people, there is no mechanism for Donald Trump to become president again unless he wins in 2024 or he, he has an uprising, a coup, which is a military coup where the military goes in and sees the government and hands the government back to Donald Trump. And that's not going to happen. The generals are not going to let that happen. So 
Those are the only two ways Donald Trump can be back in office. But he's going around telling people down in Mar-a-Lago that, and anybody that'll listen, that the, tr the election was rigged and he's going to be reinstated back in, as, in the presidency by August. This is a clown show. This is a real clown show. And Donald Trump is the ringmaster. And what's scary about this is the cuckoos out here, and there's millions of them. I'm sorry, people, if you take offense, if you're a Trump supporter, you like his policies. I'm sorry. I, there, there's, not, there's not a policy in the world that's going to allow me to follow behind somebody like that. I, I don't care. I don't care if he's talking the best stuff in the world. I'm not going to ride with a bigot. I'm not going to ride with a, a with a goofball, with an imbecile. But what's scary about the whole Donald Trump thing, the whole thing that's scary about it is somebody might get in office that's smarter than him, that acts like him. This is some dangerous stuff. These people out here that are the modern day Republican Party is really the Confederacy. These people are the Dixie Democrats of the old South. Now, let me let me explain that so y'all can understand this that, that that have never followed my show. The Dixie Democrats of the old South were taken over by Ronald Reagan. Ronald Reagan went down to Mississippi and told all of those bigots that, that hated other people that we're fighting for you. So what that did was all of those Dixie Democrats that were bigots that didn't want desegregation, they switched over to the Republican Party. A lot of people forget that because the reason why a lot of people forget that is because a lot of people aren't in their 40s and 50s that's paying that's paying attention to the news. Like when you when like I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to get it to where you can understand. I was born in the 70s. I was born in a time where there was two things going on. OK. Whites used to call us the N-word out in the open and nothing ever happened to them. I was born right there at the time where there were still one or two whites that were brave enough to call you the N-word out in the streets. But I also was born right there at the time where our generation was the generation that started beating them up. Let me let me let me get more into detail about what I'm saying. I'm not I'm not espousing no violence. What I'm saying is back before I was born when whites called you the n-word, spit on you, all you had to do is put your head down and keep walking and they'll leave you alone. My generation stopped that. My generation was the generation that started smacking the shit out of these people and beating them up. I was born right there at that, that time in America where you didn't see too many white people still outright call you the N-word because they knew they would get their asses beat in the streets. And I remember times when my mother and... Elder people would tell me, man, oh, just don't say nothing. My generation didn't care. We would beat you up. If you was a little white guy and you come into a crowd of black people and start calling them the N-word and spitting on people, before my generation, they would put their heads down and keep walking and don't say nothing. My generation was the generation that was right there at that crucial moment where things started to change. Where we started literally fighting back. 
You spit on me, you might get spit on back. You call me the N-word, I'm going to call you the H-word. If you slap me or kick me in my ass because I'm black, I'm going to smack the shit out you and kick you in your ass. That's the generation I was born in. So what doesn't happen, what doesn't happen is the generations that came after me, after my generation, they grew up in a society where you very rarely hear whites out in the open say the N-word. They might get caught on tape and get fired for saying the N-word, but they very rarely say it out in the open to you. So a lot of minority teenagers and young adults, kids in their 20s and 30s, they didn't grow up knowing what that felt like to have a white guy walk in a crowd of black people and call them the N-word and spit on them and they don't do nothing. I'm talking about literally all the blacks will put their head down and keep walking. One white guy could walk into a crowd of black people and get the hurling in, in, in inflammatory words at them and they would do nothing. So the young adults today didn't have to go through that. So a lot of them have dropped the ball. They dropped the ball. They not worried about this stuff. They're worried about, uh, uh, you know, Pooh Shiesty. They worried about uh, Megan Thee Stallion new album. They're worried about garbage stuff that doesn't even, you know, is is is, is irrelevant. You know, they're, they're worried about stuff that's irrelevant. They dropped the ball. So, what has happened is. A lot of the white people that still has that bigotry in their heart, they've suppressed it so long when somebody like Donald Trump comes out and says things out in the open, it flamed them up. It riled them up. And this is the type of stuff that led to the uh, January 6th riot at the Capitol. But it goes beyond that. Some of y'all don't remember the Tea Party movement. The Tea Party movement was a movement that had some minorities in it. But the vast majority of the Tea Party people were bigots. They spit on John Lewis. They waved the uh, Confederate flag sometimes. A lot of these people were bigots. So what has happened is... They've been suppressed from outright showing their bigotry. And they've been secretly sending their kids to Congress. You know, whatever they've been talking about around the, the dinner table, about blacks and minorities, it's been affecting their kids. And they're sending them off to universities. They're sending them off to uh, Congress. They're sending them off to the Senate. But these people, like like Lindsey Graham, and, and 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 Marco Rubio, and 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 uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene, these people are not even in their fifties. These people were raised with another generation of suppressed bigotry. Understand what I'm trying to explain to you. They were raised in a household where their mom and dad might have went to work and came home complaining about the black guy who got a raise just because of the color of his skin. And I've been working there 10 years. But what he didn't tell his children is the reason why the government did that is because people was not giving minorities raises and they were picking whites over blacks, period. So the government had to step in and force, they had to force companies to hire more black people. Because we just as intelligent as you are. 
I'm, I'm, hope, I'm hoping y'all getting an understanding of what I'm saying. So now everything I'm boiled over. You got some rich guy who's been a racist. Donald Trump has been a racist, but he just been so rich to where everybody looks over his bigotry because they want something from him. He's been a bigot. His dad was involved with a Klan rally in New York. People don't even know that history about Donald Trump. So now he done ran for president and all of his bigotry because he don't care about nothing. The man's rich. So now all of his bigotry, he sticks his chest out and spews out all of this garbage and a lot of poor white people who feel like they can't express themselves because they might get canceled or they might get fired. They love him. He's speaking for them. But what they don't realize is that era is over with. Whatever y'all thinking in y'all mind, whatever y'all thinking in y'all mind out there, because I know biggest, I know biggest watch my show all the time. I've had hate emails sent to me. And I don't care nothing about that because I can defend myself. I don't shy away from guns. I'm one of those progressive liberals who don't shy away from guns. I love guns. So I can defend myself. I don't worry about none of that. My thing is, they have to have an understanding that whatever they thinking in their mind about taking over the government for white people, or sending this country back into the stone ages of bigotry, it's not going to happen. It's going to be death in the streets. And they're going to lose. Because there's too many white people who have had babies and kids and married black people. They're going to rise up and, ride and, and, and stand beside us. See, back in the 60s and the 50s, you probably had a handful of white people that stood up for minorities. A handful. It's not like that today. It's not like that today. So whatever these people are thinking in their mind, the Proud Boys, uh, uh, whatever group is out there, that's thinking that they're going to uh, some kind of way take over this country and turn it back into apartheid or some kind of you know, weird white people on top, everybody else on the bottom, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. It's going to be death in the streets because we're not going to let it go back there. My concern is the young adults in the black community that's not paying attention. Because if you're not paying attention, guys like me, we're going to survive. We're going to fight. We're going we're gonna to rise up. But a lot of people out here in the black and minority communities across this country who ain't paying attention, a lot of y'all going to be put in y'all graves. You know, when you do like this, man, I ain't worried about that stuff. That's when bad things happen. I'm going to take this first commercial break. And uh, when we get back, uh, we're going to talk about uh, these, nut, these nut cases that have come out about the vaccine. Because it's not only affecting our politics. It's also affecting the health of this country. Because these people are whack jobs. The business, motherfucker. The Daily Read. The The business, motherfucker. The Daily Read. And some of the information that I think had been discussed on your podcast related to EMF frequencies. That was a thought. 
And, and it was you, I mean, cause now, cause right now that? we're all kind of um, hypothesizing. I mean, what is it that's actually being transmitted that's causing all of these things? Is it a combination of the protein, which now we're finding has a metal attached to it? I'm sure you've seen the pictures all over the internet of people who've had these shots and now they're magnetized. They can put a key on their forehead, it sticks. They can put spoons and forks all over them and they can stick. Because now we think that there's a metal piece to that. There's been people who've long suspected that there was some sort of an interface, yet to be defined, an interface between what's being injected in these shots and all of the 5G towers. Not proven yet, but we're trying to figure out what is it that's being transmitted to these unvaccinated. Uh, that woman right there is a nutcase. She's a part of the problem. Now, you got two things going on in America when it comes down to the crazy lunatics on the white side of America. Okay? Number one, you got the outright bigots. Okay? That's number one. You got the outright bigots. Number two, the bigots have learned that they cannot stand alone. Because it's too many of us to fight against. So what they've done is they've connected with the fringe lunatics, the QAnon. Now, this is going to mess some of y'all up out there in, in, in radio land that's listening to me. This is going to mess some of you guys up. Okay, pay attention. I'm, 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 I'm going to drop some jewels on you. Pay attention. The bigots, knowing that they cannot win have hooked up with this QAnon conspiracy theorist. Now, the QAnon conspiracy theorist people are blacks, whites, Hispanics, all kinds of mixture of people. Okay, this is like I say, this is gonna mess some of y'all up because you got black people that are out here spreading lies about 5G towers. I did a whole show a few months back where I, I, I contested this black girl. She was, a, she was a, a nurse. I don't even think she was a nurse. But she started spreading lies about 5G towers. Most of the 5G towers haven't even been put up yet. There's only like a few thousand of them put up around America. That's why you have these outages sometimes on your phones. If you got a 5G phone because... They haven't placed all of the 5G towers that they need to put in place yet. Okay. Back then, when this young black girl got on, on YouTube and started lying about how 5G towers can give you cancer, I went back and did my research on it. Radio waves is a non-malignant uh, radiation. Non-malignant radiation is the type of radiation that cannot give you cancer, okay? She was spreading lies, people. She was spreading lies. So now that the vaccine has come out and thousands and thousands and millions of people have taken the vaccine, they're trying to say that there's some type of metal inside the vaccine that's connecting to the 5G towers that's making people magnetized. You can't make this stuff up, people. This is literally going on right now. Now, the conspiracy theorists are a mixed race of people. The bigots have latched on. Understand how this is working. The bigots have latched on to the conspiracy theorists, people. And now you can't tell them apart. Okay. What they did was the bigots have boosted their numbers. The, the, the races. They, they boosted their numbers. And now you got minorities going around, riding around with bigots and racist people. Because they believe in a certain conspiracy theories that a group of people believe in the biggest they already know this stuff is fake they just need the numbers they need the voters they need the numbers to get racist people that they want to put in power 
they need the numbers. So what they've done is they went out and got a group of conspiracy theorist people. Like I said, it's a mixture of co all of these conspiracy theorists are not just white people. You got black people in my hood, in, in, in the place I live that I talk to every day. And I'm sitting here looking at these people like I've taken a shot. I've taken a Moderna shot. Both of them. I'm just fine. I'm not magnetized. I'm, I don't have no keys sticking to my skin. I don't have no metal sticking to my skin. These people are liars. Now, again, like I said, they're liars, but they need to get their numbers up because they can't win an election with just a whole race of white bigot people, bigoted, bigot racist people. They can't win. So they've attached themselves to this QAnon movement. The QAnon people, some of them are racist too. Not all of them. Because like I said, you got a mixed bag. You got blacks, you Hispanics, you got all kinds of people mixed in with this conspiracy theory stuff. My problem is, if you're going to believe in this, this cookery, kick the racist out. That's my thing. If you're going to believe in all of this bull that anybody's telling you, that you read in on social media, get rid of the bigots. Because whatever I believe in personally, the first time I go to a meeting about it and I see a whole bunch of people in there with rebel flags, I'm out of there. I'm out. I don't care if I believe in what you believe in or not. If I see one bigot in there with a Confederate flag talking the same talk that I talk about the things I believe in, I'm out of there. Because I have a mind to think and know that the bigots have latched on to the conspiracy theorist movement because they need the numbers. Half of these bigots don't even believe in this garbage they sell. There's a woman being sued right now because she's a crackpot. She got, she's a lawyer. I, uh, I can't, her name is on the tip of my tongue. Some of y'all know who I'm talking about. But she got on TV with Rudy Giuliani and told the world that the election was rigged, that some people in South America and people in China interfered with the election machines. So the people who own the election machine company, they sued her for two million dollars, two billion, I think it was two million dollars or two billion dollars, something, something to that effect. Because their company is taking a major hit because of the things she's saying. This woman, you can look at her and tell that this woman is nuts. You can look at Rudy Giuliani. And you can tell Rudy Giuliani is off his rocker. I don't care nothing about what he did in New York as far as being America's mayor. The guy is a nut job. He's a, he's a crackpot. So you got crackpots working for Donald Trump, who's an outright bigot. J, uh, uh, Stephen Miller, which was Donald Trump's right-hand man, he was the guy who made all the policies, the racist policies of Donald Trump. That guy is not crazy. If you ever sit down and watch him, Stephen Miller, the guy behind the scenes that was making all of Donald Trump's policies, just, just Google his name and watch how he speaks, watch how he talks, watch how he moves. That guy knows exactly what he's doing. He is not crazy. That guy's an outright racist who worked for Donald Trump, who helped the White House when Donald Trump was in the White House make racist policies. And still to this day, Stephen Miller is running around uh, jumping on newscasts and news programs, spitting out his racist bigotry. He knows that the bigots need the QAnon crazies. Because the QAnon crazies are the ones that stormed 
that stormed the Capitol. Those nutcases are the ones that actually stole, stormed the Capitol. But it was a mixture with the biggest two. I'm finna, I'm finna go into another video. I'm finna go into another clip. Because I want you guys to get a full understanding. That first woman that I just played, she was a nutcase, but she's not the craziest one that spoke. This woman right here who claims she's a nurse and she took the shot and now she's magnetized. Watch this. This is gonna this is gonna make you laugh. Yes, vaccines do harm people. By the way, so I just found out something when I was on lunch and I wanted to show it to you. We were talking about Dr. Tenpenny's testimony about magnetic vaccine crystals. So this is what I found out. So I have a key and a bobby pin here. Explain to me why the key sticks to me. It sticks to my neck too. I got this. Yeah, so if somebody can explain this, that would be great. Any questions? <laughs> oh my God. No, no, no. Now, people, let me explain this to you. I could take a playing card and and, moist, and put some moisture on the back of it and stick it to my forehead. I could take a key, put some moisture on my skin, and stick it and stick it to my skin. The reason why is because your skin has pores, and if you have a little bit of moisture on on your skin. You can take small objects and literally slap it on your skin and it'll, it'll, it'll stick to you for a few seconds and then it'll fall off. And uh, if y'all don't know who, uh, Pharaoh on the Ring of Fire, he's funny. I love I love Pharaoh. Uh, you guys need to watch uh, Pharaoh. Uh, 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 the guy's too funny. He basically telling the woman, you're dirty. You need to go take a bath because... If you got sweaty skin and keys are sticking to your skin, you basically dirty. You need to go take a shower. That's basically what he's telling this woman. This is too funny. Listen, listen to how he explains this. <laughs> yeah, you're totally magnetic. You can't even get a coin to stick to you. Good grief. Um, listen, the problem is not just that we have people in the medical field that think everybody's turning into Magneto because of these vaccines. The problem is that the Republicans there didn't push back against these claims like whatsoever. They just sat there nodding along like, mm -hmm, yeah, magnetism. Yes. I've heard, heard of people having that. <laughs> I saw this documentary called X-Men where that was totally a thing that happened. No, the vaccine is not going to make you magnetic. <laughs> like I said, people, I took the vaccine. I am not Magneto. I don't know what type of X-Files or X-Men this woman been watching, but the vaccine does not make you magnetic people. That's a conspiracy theory. And these people are sitting in front of congressmen telling them to investigate something that's just add more and more craziness on to Donald Trump's crew of nut jobs, nut cra crazy people. Listen to what he said about her being dirty. She need to go take a shower. And I love how the doctor and her things like, you know, we just, we want an explanation as to why things are sticking to people. Believe it or not, folks, over the years, there have been plenty of people, you know, across the planet who have claimed that they are magnetic. And we've seen pictures of them. Again, they stick metal to them. It sticks right on them. But you know what makes that magnetism go away? When they take a shower. Like this is literally something that's been widely debunked for decades. Now the oils in their skins, the dirt, the grime, the grease, whatever it is, allows virtually anything to stick to them because they're, they're dirty. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. You hear this people basically he telling the woman, listen, when you got oily skin, like right now, I oil my beard. I got oily skin right, right on my face. I can literally take a key and slap it right here on my jaw, my cheek, and it'll probably stick there for like two or three seconds before it falls off. And the reason why is because my skin is oily right now. He's basically telling this woman, listen, you probably need to go take a shower. Once you take a shower and clean your skin up, get all the oil off your body, that key is not gonna stick to you, lady. You know what I'm saying? It was just too funny. 
This is this is this is ludicrous. And this is what we got to deal with out here. Because like I said, the, the, the bigots out here have learned that it's too late for them to go at it alone. They can't rise up by themselves. They can't walk in the streets and say, we don't like minorities by themselves. They need a crew with them. They got to have an army. And what they've done is they've uh, radicalized a whole bunch of crackpots who live way out in the boondocks in the country somewhere. You know, they live way out there and they, and they, and they watch the news living in fear of everybody that's black and brown. The only time you see these people is when they come into town and buy groceries. And then they squirrel themselves away all the way out in the sticks. You know, they go back out in the sticks and they sit with their guns and their Bible and all the little uh, canned goods that they can store up and they hate everybody. But they, but they radicalize these people and make them believe all kinds of garbage. I'm going to get into this next commercial break. And when we come back, we're going to talk about how Donald Trump used the DOJ, Department of Justice, to investigate Democrats' private emails and stuff. This just came out, people. This is serious. Now, this what I was just talking about now was kind of comical, okay? You know, <laughs> women going to Congress telling them that, that they got keys sticking to their body and all this. That's garbage. That's comedy. But what Donald Trump did was, I think, against the law. But not only was it against the law, not only was it against the law, it was also dangerous because if he's allowed to get away with this, if the Department of Justice is allowed to get away with this, it's not going to stop. Anybody that the president feels like is an enemy of his, he can go and have you investigated with no probable cause. This is trouble. This is some troubling stuff. So when we get back, we're going to talk about that. The business, motherfucker. Man, the Daily Read. Me and Bae gon' always be tight. Though you're not with me every single day and night. Even when they start to actin' like a fool. Yeah, they lay up in every single thing you do. Know that they can always be themselves They love each other more than anybody else And every day as you see I'm on YouTube You know there's not one, it'll always be the two Too stupid Emily, too stupid Emily Too stupid Emily The business, motherfucker. The Daily Read. Republican State Representative Mike Neerman, who was caught on surveillance video, opening the door of the Capitol to let in a mob last December. That mob, which was allegedly upset about coronavirus restrictions in the state, then managed to overcome officers and invade the building. Now... This this Republican in uh, in uh, uh, Ohio, I think it was either Ohio or uh, Idaho or something like that. It was in the news that he opened the door. Now he works in the house. He's he's a representative of the house, and he opened the door for rioters to get in to storm the Capitol in that state last December. This ties in to what I'm finna talk about with Donald Trump and how he managed to make the DOJ investigate uh, Democrats. This is some stuff right out of Nixon. Basically, what I'm trying to explain to you is these people are playing chess while a lot of us minorities are out here playing checkers. We are here playing. We are here... Uh, we, 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 we more worried about hip hop news and, 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 and some garbage, stuff that don't even really matter. 
And these people are raising their kids and sending people like him into Congress. And once he gets into Congress, he fulfills an agenda of white supremacy. Now, he got caught on tape. I'm, I'm going to get to the Donald Trump story in just a second because I want to show you how these people have placed key people in place around the country in government, smaller governments, like how in, in state governments, they've placed people in government around the country to fulfill a racist agenda while minorities are sleeping behind the wheel. Okay. This is a this this video clip right here shows how he incriminated himself by telling the crowd of people that he was speaking at that on that day, if they call this number and tell tell whoever on the other end that they're at this part of the building. Somebody's going to come out and open the door for them. Listen to this. Some of them carried guns and bear spray and called for the arrest of Governor Kate Brown. And then another video emerged from just a few days before the mob reached the Capitol, showing Mike Neerman explaining how he would let protesters into the building. We're talking about setting up Operation Hall Pass, which I don't know anything about. And if you accuse me of knowing something about it, I'll deny it. But there would be some person's cell phone, which might be 971 but that was just random numbers that I speed up. That's not anybody's actual cell phone. And if you say, I'm at the West entrance during the session and text to that number there, that somebody might exit that door while you're standing there. But I don't know anything about that. I don't have anything to do with that. And if I did, I wouldn't say that I did. Now, he just incriminated himself, okay? See, I had to play that for you just to let you know how all of this is connected with Donald Trump. See, this plan has been put in place slowly ever since I was born. See, see, when I do my show, listen very carefully, people. This is why my show is one of the hottest shows growing in America right now. I connect the dots for you. I started off at the beginning of the show, I was telling you how when I was born, I was born right there at the time where blacks and minorities started fighting back. Not protesting. I'm talking about literally fighting back. You bring guns, we bringing guns. You spit on one of us, you might get spit on too. You slap one of us, we're going to slap you and, and maybe beat you up. We, my generation started all of that to the point where white people no longer say the N-word out in the open because they know better. Not just because you're going to get canceled or fired. That's going to happen after. They don't say it no more because they know guys like me and women like and women that act like me will slap the shit out you. And we ain't worried about no mob trying to hang us in the tree. Because as soon as we see a mob of white people thinking they finna hang us in the tree, we gonna go get a gun. See, that's my generation. So what happened is, they had this suppressed bigotry that they couldn't let out. So they started putting a plan in place to send their kids and their grandkids into Congress. People like this guy right here who probably grew up on racism in private. So they, 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 they set him up to run for office while we black people and minorities are out here trying to be rappers and football players and basketball players and, 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 and models and movie stars we entertaining people while these people are putting representatives in Congress that's going to change the laws to help white people and destroy black people and minorities. See, there's a difference. There's a difference. These kids on the wall, my kids on the wall right here. One of my daughters is in the military. My other daughter is a nurse. 
My daughter that's in the military, she's interested in politics. My daughter that's not in the military, she's not. I told my daughter that's in the military, when you, when you get out the military, number one, you're a licensed gun carrier. Her and her boyfriend. That's a, that's a good thing. Protect yourself. Number two, you don't have no felonies. And you got military service behind you. Get into Congress. Get into politics. Start making moves into your community that you can start changing laws to help us, to help better our society. See, we need more of that. We, we, we need more of that. Instead of me telling my daughter, girl, you cute, uh, baby. Uh, why don't you go down there and try to be a model? I know a girl right now uh, who owns a modeling agency. I do. I literally, I literally know somebody who owns a modeling agency right now. But instead of me telling my daughter, why don't you go down there and, uh, you know, sign up and try to be a model? No. If you want to do that on your extra time, do that. But, you know, with your service to your country and the things you got going on, and the voice that you have when it comes to politics. My daughter, my youngest daughter, has a strong voice when it comes to politics. She don't play. She would be a good representative to go in here into society and help change society. We need more of that. Because whenever you got a young man who's a rapper, like, I'm going to give two examples. Pooh Shiesty. He's facing 20 years right now. Uh, King Vaughn just got murdered. He got shot. He punched somebody. Both of these men were worth a lot of money because they were rappers. Instead of them taking that money after they became famous rappers and getting involved like, like Killer Mike, they started buying $50,000 gold chains, uh, Bentleys, uh, going to the club, you can see King Von throwing money out in the crowd. You know, we out here entertaining people. But the bigots, they got a plan. They finna shut all of this down. They finna put people in key places around the country and elect somebody like Donald Trump. And they're gonna collect all of the wealth of this country. And focus it towards white people. And the few minorities that kick it with them. Because you still, like I say, you got some minorities out here who ride with them. Don't get it twisted, people. Now I'm going to talk about Donald Trump. And how he did a dangerous thing when he started uh, investigating people who he thought was his enemy. Email from Apple that I almost deleted uh, saying, you know, this is a customer service notice that your data was turned over. And I read it, and at first it, I really did think it was spam, uh, but uh, noted, you know, the words Department of Justice left off the screen. And I, you know, talked with our House intelligence staff. And of course, others had also received the same notice. And we have since learned, as the New York Times reported, uh, that there were a number of staffers and Congressman Schiff and I who were. Uh, targeted. Um, look, it, it, this is not about Adam Schiff and myself. It's about a president rewarding his friends corruptly through the Department of Justice, as he did with Michael Flynn and Roger Stone, and punishing his perceived enemies. And my fear is that he may not have been successful this time in locking up his perceived enemies, but a more corrupt or Donald Trump in the White House again may not be as patient and may just skip the Department of Justice and its processes and just order his lieutenants to lock up his political opponents. Now, that's Saul Will. He's a Democrat. Basically, he's trying to explain to people that what Donald Trump did while he was in office, as soon as he got in office, he told the Department of Justice to start investigating Democrats. He wanted to get dirt on Democrats. That's against the law. It's against the Constitution to go out and investigate people without probable cause. But they did it. They sent subpoenas 
to uh, the phone companies to get all kinds of data records on some of these congressmen and congresswomen who are in Congress right now, who are in the Senate and in the House. This is dangerous because Donald Trump was so much of a goofball that they plan was in place, but the leader of the plan was a goofball. What he's trying to tell you people is once they get somebody in there that's just like Donald Trump, who's not a goofy, it's going to be troubling. I'm talking about democracy might be over with for America if they get somebody in office that's smarter than Donald Trump. Donald Trump was a rich goofball with a little bigotry mixed in. That's what he is. He wasn't even supposed to be in the White House, period. But when he got in there, the biggest of this country tried to enact a plan that they've had in place for a long time. It didn't work. The reason why it didn't work because Donald Trump is a goofball. If there was a man who knew politics, anybody besides Donald Trump that knew politics, that knew how to work it and word his words better, he would have did great damage to this country. And this is what they're trying to tell you. The next person that comes along, because it's not going to be Donald Trump. Donald Trump is done. But the next person that comes along, they've already seen what they can get away with with Donald Trump. Donald Trump was like the like 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 when you test something, it's a word called test the waters. Donald Trump was a test run, a goofy test run. Listen to this. Yeah, I guess that, that that's the crux of it, right? I mean, when, when you hear this news and this sort of idea that, well, it went through the proper channels, that, you know, th that that's both at some level, I guess, like there's some check there, but also disturbing that there were people inside the Justice Department that went along with this operation. I don't know why Chris Hayes thinks that uh, he's surprised about that. Because I've been sitting here telling you that bigots have been placing people in positions of power all around this country. Why do you think so much police brutality is happening? They're not just sending white bigots into Congress. They're placing them in positions of power all over America. They're putting them in the police stations. They're putting them in the fire stations. They're putting them in uh, 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 the FBI. They're putting them in the military high ranks. There's a there's an article I read about how in the military, you got so many bigots that have come into the military that you got a large population of Donald Trump supporters in the military. In the military. Listen to this last clip. You know, there's also an incredible irony here, and I think an important one, and it, it harkens back to what I was saying in that, in that monologue about rebalancing power, right, which was a, a huge part of what that Nixon, post-Nixon era looked like. There was this sort of moving power back towards Congress from the executive. But there's an incredible irony here, which is that having already secretly subpoenaed members of Congress and their staffs and acquiring their data, when the House subpoenaed the white Donald Trump and people in his orbit, they basically successfully stalled for years in court, essentially got the Supreme Court to more or less ratify a kind of gutting of that House subpoena power while the executive was able to just go in and get the phone records from Apple. Now, Chris Hayes explained it good, but I'm, I like to break things down for people who really don't have a understanding Basically, what Chris Hayes is saying that Donald Trump went through the proper channels to subpoena records of Democrats with no proof they did nothing wrong. But when the Democrats tried to investigate him and impeach him, he refused to give his records up. He went all the way to the Supreme Court and refused to have anybody testify and refused to give up any records. 
he didn't get a chance of the Democrats to refuse. He went behind their backs and sent subpoenas out to the phone companies to get their information of who they've been talking to. Text messages, all kinds of stuff. This is dangerous. This is dangerous because you, you got the legislative body which makes the laws. You have the judiciary which interpret the laws and then you have the, the executive branch which put the laws that are made into 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 the into the population and makes it work. So you got three co-equal branches of government. So if you got three co-equal branches of government, Donald Trump just neutralized the Congress. He neutralized the, the legislative branch by sending subpoenas out to investigate them, but they couldn't send subpoenas back and get his information. They were supposed to be able to get his, just like he got their information, they were supposed to be able to get his information too because they're co-equal branches of the government. This is dangerous. Because that means if you that means a person like me who speaks out against this, they can just go and get my records. I got freedom of speech. You shouldn't you shouldn't be able to go get any record I got. I mean, I don't care if you get it or not. I don't have nothing to hide. But you shouldn't be able to go and get my stuff just because you don't like what I'm saying when I can't go get your information. This is dangerous. I hope you guys learned something from today, man. I like to bring, uh, you know, real, real stuff to my audience, and I'm glad to be back. Uh, uh, like I was telling my audience earlier, I have a son on the way. Uh, he's due in August, and uh, this will be my third child, my my first son, and I'm 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 excited, people. I'm very excited. You know, uh, both my girls are grown. And they out living their lives. They got their own careers, their own house. And uh, they stop by and see me every now and then. And, uh, you know, it's going to be, it's going to be, an, it's going to be an exciting 20, the next 21 years is going to be something, something, uh, something we're going to look back on the history books on. But uh, this is the Daily Read, people, and I'm out. The business, motherfucker. Man, the Daily Read. The business. Yeah.